Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now, tonight's story, The Case of the Wounded Killer. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney knows that there are two kinds of men, those who obey the law and those who break it. This case started with both kinds in a doctor's office in a residential district on the outskirts of town, shortly after midnight. Oh, oh Doc, it hurts. I'm afraid it's going to hurt more, Jim, unless your father lets me put you under. How about it, Mr. Larson? No. i got to get him out of here as soon as you finish. All right. I'll have to probe for that bullet. Then stop talking and go ahead and probe. Grip the sides of the table, Jim. Yeah, I'm gripping. Go ahead. All right, I've got it. Can you hand me those compresses, please, Mr. Larson? Yeah. I'll plug this for now to stop the blood. You'll have to come back tomorrow for a new dressing, Jim. Pain subsiding any now? Yeah, it's a little better. Mm-hmm. All right, push that roll of tape over here. Yeah. Sorry we had to get you out of bed, Doctor. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Now then, I'll give you a shot of penicillin to combat infection. Yeah. You better have a shot a day for the next three days to play safe, Jim. And stay off that leg. All right, you can help him get dressed, Mr. Larson. Okay. Come on, Jim. Yeah, just... Let me get this up. Now then, you'd better give me the whole story, Mr. Larson. I did tell you. Just a simple accident. I I was cleaning a gun. Uh-huh. Where and at what time? What do you have to know all that for? The police always want detailed information whenever a doctor treats a gunshot wound, Jim. You are not going to report this to the police. Oh, yes, I am, Mr. I Larson. The law requires it. Sure, I... don't, don't get excited, Dad. Doc's known us for years. He understands we don't want a lot of fuss about nothing. After all, it was an accident. Doc. Yes, Jim? My father didn't do this. And it was no accident. I was just beginning to realize that. Don't pick up that phone, Doc. Holding that gun on me isn't going to change the law, Mr. Larson. Better change your mind, Doc. Take the money and forget it. No! No! Make sure he's dead. He's dead, all right. We might as well be wanted for two killings as one. I'd have found out about the stockyard guard if I let him make that call. We better get out of here. Yeah. We're going to have to take care of that leg ourselves. We can't risk going to another doctor here. Put your arm around me. All right. All right. Go ahead. You say the doctor's nurse found the body, Harrington? Hey, yeah, that's right, Chief. She's in this waiting room. Uh, Miss... Miss Blackburn, uh, this is Mr. Garrett, the district attorney. Hello. Since Chief. she found the body this morning when she came to work, I asked her the stains that you got. It. Would you mind waiting a little longer? I'll stay as long as you need me. Well, thank you. Where's the body, Harrington? In the doc's office across the hall. I've been keeping the office closed off. Nobody's been in here but the lab crew. Now, how about the medical examiner? Uh, he's on his way. Quite a bit of blood on this examination table, Harrington. Yeah, I uh, I wondered about that myself. There's some tray, surgical dressings beside the table. Hypodermic needle. Looks like an antibiotic. Mm. You don't suppose the doctor could have been trying to treat his own wound? The way he's shot... I'd say he probably died in a matter of seconds. Not time enough for this. Besides, the body is eight feet away from the table. Oh. Yeah, it must be somebody else's blood then. The medical examiner can check it by type when he gets here. 
And now I have a few things I want to ask Miss Blackburn. We can use some help from you now, Miss Blackburn. I'll tell you anything I can. Will you come across the hall to the office for a moment, please? You didn't leave the office this way last night, did you? No. Everything was put away. There was a fresh pad and sheet on the examination table. Was the doctor expecting any patient after you left? No, he said he was going to bed early. He usually turned in at nine. The doctor catches his sleep when he can. Oh, we uh, checked the bedroom, Chief. His bed had been slept in. And you see what he's wearing. Robin pajamas. <laughs> Poor doctor. I, mean... <laughs> I think you'd better go home now, Miss Blackburn. If we need any more information, we can reach you there. Thank you. Tell the sergeant outside I want one of the men to drive you home in a squad car. Thank you. Well, that settles one thing, Harrington. Dr. Hammett treated an unexpected patient last night. Somebody who got him out of bed, accepted his help, and then killed him. Yeah, but why? Well, there's only one reason I can think of. To keep him from calling the police. Look at the instruments that we used. Yeah, a probe. Yeah, uh, he'd use that digging for a bullet. <laughs> I know. Had a few dug out myself. What are you looking around for? Trash container. Oh, right there next to the instrument cabinet. Uh, some stuff in here, all right. Yeah, dump it out on this newspaper. Mm, surgical gauze. Blood stain. Hey, yeah, what's that? Sleeve torn from a blue damaged shirt. Must have been ripped off to bind the wound before the patient was brought here. Mm, must have been some wound. That thing is soaked. Push that gauze around carefully. Use a pencil. There. There it is. Yeah. Hey, that's a rifle slug, Chief. Looks like a 30-30 silver tip. The lab boy said the doc was shot with a revolver. Probably a 38 police special. Well, the man the doctor treated was shot someplace else by somebody else. Both wounds wouldn't be from the same gun. You mean the fellow we're after was in a gunfight before he came here? Well, that's the way it shapes up, Harrington. Losing all that blood, he couldn't have come far alone. Chances are he had somebody with him, helping him. Yeah, that means we've got two men to look for. Yes. The medical examiner will be able to supply us with the wounded man's blood type. I'm going to send this rifle slug and whatever he digs out of the doctor through ballistics. While we're back at the office waiting for it, I want to check on something else. Uh, what? Every police report involving gunplay that took place within 100 miles of this city last night. Yep, just finished. You better take them right in. Mr. Garrett's waiting for them. Mm, how about the shooting report? Nothing yet from the county. We're waiting for outside teletypes. Masterson will bring them up as soon as he gets anything. Uh, okay. Lab reports, Chief. The man the doctor treated was blood type A. How about the ballistics? The slug we found in the container was a 30-30 silver tip, all right. And the lab was right about the gun that killed Dr. Hammett. 38 police special. Any distinctive markings on the bullets? Plenty. They said they'll have no trouble matching them up with the guns they came from, if we find the guns. And we'll find them, all right. Get the... Mr. Garrett. Yes, Miss Miller. This just came in on the teletype. It's from David Corkin, the district attorney of Roebling County. Well. Oh. And yeah, what is it, Chief? A shooting. Happened early last night. A guard from the stockyards near their railroad terminal was shot and killed. The body was found less than an hour ago in a cattle pen. Roebling County Stockyard. Yeah, 70 miles from here. Think it could tie in with our case? Get a car, and we're going to find out. Have Radio Division contact the Roebling County Sheriff's Office, Miss Miller. Ask them to notify Dave Corkin that I'm on my way up to meet him. Yes, sir. Hello, Dave. Oh, hello, Paul. Good to see you. You know my assistant, Harrington. Yeah, sure. Glad to see you again, Mr. Corkin. What about this killing, Dave? Well, this man was a special guard. Cattle are unloaded to this terminal when they come in from the shippers. 
Quite a few head have been stolen in the past couple of months. I see. That's why the dead man was hired, to try and stop it. Incidentally, what's your interest in the case? Oh, well, both of us may be after the same killer. A doctor in my county was murdered last night after treating a gunshot wound. Mm. Do you know the caliber of the gun that killed the guard? Yes, yes, it was a thirty-eight police special. That fits, Chief. <laughs> a lot of thirty-eight police specials in circulation. We can have the slugs matched by ballistics to make sure, but we won't have to wait that long to be pretty certain if we can tie in one other thing. What? What kind of a weapon was your guard armed with? A rifle. Did he get a chance to use it? Yeah. Fired one shot at whoever killed him. I told you the doctor had been killed after treating a wound. If the caliber of the guard's rifle matches the caliber of the slug we found in the doctor's office, we're in this together. Hmm. What uh, caliber rifle are you looking for, Paul? The 30 30. Well, then we're in this together. That's what it was. A doctor in my county had been murdered. And the same gun that killed him had been used the same night in the murder of a guard at a railroad terminal stockyard 70 miles away. We turned our ballistics findings over to Corkin's lab men. On the way back to town, Harrington and I got a scientific verification of our suspicions by shortwave radio. Corkin's lab men had matched the bullets. It didn't take the lab boys long to compare those slugs, did it? No, it never does. They're a good crew. Yep. The uh, test-firing slug they got from the guard's rifle was a perfect match for the slug Dr. Hammett removed from that patient we're looking for. We're not only looking for him. We're going to find him. And whoever was with him. Yeah, and uh, something else. You were right about it being more than one man. The man who got hit wouldn't be in any condition to drive 70 miles all by his lonesome, especially in a truck. Well, 70 miles to get to a doctor. Yeah, pretty long haul with a bad wound. Yes, and it answers a question I've had in mind. I wonder why they didn't tie the doctor up and leave him instead of killing him. That would have given him time to get away before he could make a report to the police. What are you figuring, Chief? They had to kill Dr. Hennett to avoid positive identification. Because they knew him, and he knew them. No, I don't follow you on that. Now, look, Harrington. Dr. Hemmett's house is in the suburbs and on a side street away from the direct routes into the city center. Uh Uh-huh. It wouldn't be easy to locate in the middle of the night unless you knew just where it was. Not only that, the killers passed through another city and a half a dozen small towns to get there. They could have gotten to a hundred other doctors more easily than they got to Dr. Hemmett, and a lot sooner. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Harrington. If you were shot and you wanted to keep it off the record but you had to be treated, what would you do? Well, uh... I'd go to my own family doctor, of course, and hope that I could talk him out of making a report. I see what you mean now. The men we're after must live in or near the area of Dr. Hammett's office. Yes. And we can narrow it quite a bit more than that. How? They were stealing cattle. Yeah. Would you know what to do with stolen cattle? Where would you take them? What use would they be to you? Well, none, unless I... Go ahead. Well, unless I happen to be a butcher or a meat wholesaler, somebody in the meat business. Right. Right. And those are the people we're going to check. Here are today's reports from the plain clothes squad, Mr. Garrett. Anything? No, they've checked every possible place, even places where hides are sold after slaughtering. There's no trace of the hide brands Mr. Corkin gave us from previous cattle thefts. Well, none that aren't accounted for by regular shipment, I mean. Nothing from the doctors either. No? The man we're after had a very bad wound. He's taking a big chance if he isn't having it dressed and cared for. He's taking a bigger chance by going to another doctor the way we've canvassed him. Yes, I guess you're right. Hi, Miss Miller. Hi. Hi, Chief. I'm beat. I've been in and out of so many cold storage boxes in the last two days, my blood is beginning to wonder if I'm a snowman. <laughs> no luck? Oh, nothing but government inspected meat all sealed and stamped. Another day and I'll be ready for a hook myself. <laughs> I must have walked. I'll get it, Mr. Garrett. District Attorney's Office. Oh, yes, Mrs. Simon. When? Oh, I see. Your husband's store. Yes. Might very well be. I'll tell him right away. Thank you. Look, Mrs. Simon, Mr. Garrett, she's a policewoman in the juvenile squad. Yeah? Her husband's a druggist. Works at the all-night pharmacy at Sutton and Knife. From midnight until eight, he had some trouble with a customer last night. What kind of trouble? man came in and bought a vial of penicillin, and then he wanted a hypodermic needle for administering it. Mr. Clymer told him he couldn't sell it to him without a doctor's prescription. The man tried to bribe him. When that didn't work, he got mad. Clymer told him to see a doctor and come back, but he stalked out. Mm, that could be something, Chief. Yeah, it certainly could. 
Did Mr. Clyman know the man? Yes, his name's Larson. He just opened a small business a few blocks away from the drugstore. Well, what kind of a business? He didn't know. Yeah, I can tell you, Chief. Here on my list, Larson and Son. Well, what are they dealing? Canned meat. Pick up a search warrant and let's go. Well, we're not going to be able to identify any of this stuff, Chief. Uh, not without the hide. I know. You tell Jeff to notify the Merchant Protection Service that we're in here on a warrant? Yeah. The door shake will know about it when he makes his round. Hey, he's been instructed not to notify the lot. Good. Well, what's out back? Oh, small cattle pen. Nothing in it, though. I looked over the fence when we were coming around the place. Now, let's go out and make sure. Hey, I see. Uh-huh. One of those vats. Mm, waste, I guess. Excess fats. Probably sell it to some rendering plant for soap and other byproducts. Let's go back into the plant office. See if we can find their home address. Uh, I'll give you ten to one. I can tell you what neighborhood it will be in. I'll make it twenty. If you pick any neighborhood but Dr. Hammett's. I'll take the desk. You take the filing cabinet. Who'd be calling here now? You think Larson is wise? Mm. Might be for us. Hello? Mr. Garrett? Oh, yes, Miss Miller. What is it? I thought I'd better call you. A report came through from burglary division. It happened 20 minutes ago. What is it? Somebody broke into a drugstore, stole a tray of antibiotics and a hypodermic kit. Thanks. Talk to you later. One of the Larsons must be in bad shape, Harrington. Find that address. Take me to one. Yeah. Put the both of us in the electric chair. Get the car. Tie me out of the state someplace. To some mountain area. Where we can say we've been hunting. All right, all right. I'll get the... Hey. Is the car stopping? Yeah, right out front. Here, let me kill that light. Who could it be? You've been telling everybody not to come. How do I know who it can be? It's the police. There's no way the police could know anything. Well, I'd better go down and answer. And don't you move around up here. I can hear it all over the house when you do. Make sure that ladder doesn't leave any marks on the rug when you move it. Don't tell me what to do. Just don't move up here. Now push the cover back in place after me. All right, all right. Be with you in a minute. Coming, I'm coming. Now, what are you trying to do? Break the door down? From the time it took you to answer, it looked like that was what you wanted us to do. I was busy. Who are you anyway? What do you want? My name is Garrett, Mr. Larson. I'm the district attorney. Mind if we come in? Yes, I mind. In that case, is a warrant. What's this all about? I forgot to answer a parking ticket or something. Or something. You took a long time answering the door. I, I was fixing the light out in the kitchen. I yelled the first time you knocked. To wait a minute. We didn't hear you the first time. Look, what do you want? Why did? You, why don't you get to the point? All right, Mister Larson, do you want a gun? Shotgun. The duck hunting. Want to see it? No, I'd rather see a thirty-eight police special. Never owned one. That's funny. There's a permit for one in your office files. 
Just before you let us in, I heard a door open and close in here. These are all all open archways leading to the other rooms. Well, there's a closet there, Hyndon. There's nothing in there. Uh, just a ladder crammed in against everything. Is that what you were putting away? I told you I was fixing a light out in the kitchen, so I used the ladder. Yeah. What about it? Where's your son, Mr. Larson? Out of town. I don't... What do you want the ladder for? To take a look through that attic transom in the corner. There's nothing up there. We'll just take a look anyhow. If your son is up there, Larson, you'd better tell him not to do this the hard way. He isn't there, I told you. All right, Hangin. Look out! Pete, get out of his line! Did he hit you? No. I'll hit him if he tries to come up again. I'll kill him! Move out to the room where I can see you. You can't get out of that attic and you know it. No, but I can blow the head off anybody who tries to come up after me. I'll see them before they see me. We don't have to come up to take you, mister. We can rake every foot of the attic with gunfire. <laughs> Now, that's just a sample. We can turn the ceiling of this room into a sieve, and you're with it. You'd better get down here with your father while you've still got a chance. Come on down, Jim. Come down, or they'll kill you. Well, how about it? All right. But my leg's pretty bad. You'll have to help me. Just to keep it friendly. Open that transom all the way and throw your gun down first. All right. All right, Hyndon. Come on. Slide down. Grab my shoulder. Yeah. Be careful, my leg. Nothing's been done for it for three days. What do you want? Sympathy? I wish you had this instead of me. Yeah, I did. There's one thing you could count on. I wouldn't kill the man who could fix it for me. As it is, we're going to do more for you than you did for him. What? Call an ambulance. Jim Larson did not live long enough to be brought to trial. The neglected leg wound resulted in gangrene infection, and he died in prison hospital. His father, Robert Larson, was tried and convicted on a charge of murder in the first degree. The death sentence was mandatory. Mr. District Attorney is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.